The thing with a clean air zone is, is you can pay to pollute. What's that all about? You know, you either can't go through it, it's a clean air zone, but you can pay to go through it, so you can pollute it, but you've got to pay for it. The clean air zone is quite hypocritical. It looks more like a cash cow and a tax on the working class. Council have been very underhandedly handling the situation. They've not come to us directly, they've not discussed it directly. They've been very disorganised. We went to a planning meeting at Kellam Island. I asked questions. Sadiq Khan, he's expanding his ultra low emission zone, but people have actually been attacking his cameras. Yeah, so I've, um, <laughs> I, I've, I've seen kind of people make comments about this, and although it's unlawful and illegal, it's people taking a stand. Get ready, because 18 months' time, I'll tell you now, public cars is going to be getting done as well. We're in Neeps End today, and your business is going to be affected by this clean air zone, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Tell me how it's going to affect you. Uh, it could potentially close us down, because they're, uh, they're wanting to close the road, which passes our garage, uh, which has been there for over 50 years. Family business with my father, Mick. And uh, they just want to shut the road to make it for pedestrians, but they're only closing a section of it. Um, so that bikes are safe for about 20 yards or something like that. Um, and then they'll be back onto Rutland Road where there's lots of traffic. I have to pay my mechanics who are self-employed £10 a day more because they have to come in from Chesterfield to Sheffield to work. Uh, both their vans are biodiesel vans which do not uh, give any, any pollution whatsoever. They are Zero. When they go for MOT, they are zero. My car runs an LPG, again, it is zero. And yet we've all, all applied to the council to get the ten, £10 each knocked off, and they don't want to know. My family's kind of been ingrained in Sheffield. Um, kind of the say the family had the, the plating firm in Broom Hall. Uh, obviously, it's kind of years past. Uh, and I've got some of my dad's businesses, Northern Power Boats. I've got my own company, which is called Alpha Vapor, which is kind of a, a small vaping business. Um, and then obviously I'm taking my dad's business over as he, as he retires. I've kind of been very uh, heavily involved in the uh, Neep 10 consultation, you know, kind of protesting against the council, writing letters to my local MP, and uh, nothing kind of gets, you know, gets sent back. It's always kind of a generic letter. So I've kind of came down to try and make, you know, make some, some of a difference. We've all signed petitions and sent emails to them, but not had any replies whatsoever. How long ago when you complained? Uh, it's been in past month or so. I rent my place from the council and I've, I've made it from a place that was virtually derelict into a working, decent business. The next question is from D... D Cronshaw is he, is he not coming? So it's regarding the uh, clean air zone. I won't read out the question, but we'll provide uh, a written uh, response. This meeting is about Eccles Hall Road and the Red Roots, so I'm going to use this council meeting as an example for how councillors and committee meetings treat the general public and businesses. Just as an observation, the question from D. Cronshaw is actually the first question regarding the clean air zone. But because he's not come in, the next question comes from a person called Steve Sharp. That's question number two regarding the clean air zone. We've got a, the next person is a question from Steve Sharp. As you can see, Steve is nowhere to be seen. I found that quite odd. No, nope. that's regarding air pollution. We'll provide a, a written uh, response uh, to Mr Sharp. And then he jumps to the fourth person, Richard. Uh, the fourth person uh, is Richard Brogdon. My question at this point is, what happened to question number three? I am left with no doubt in my mind that the person you see before you doesn't know how to count to four. How did the meeting go at Callum Island? It was just showing us what they were doing and basically they could do nothing. We, we suggested some things and they just didn't accept that. It was a waste of time really. You know, we've got the plans, they're a bit vague. But it will affect us. I mean, literally, it will close the road off past our workshop. We rely on passing trade, as everybody else does around here. It will literally not do any good to the area. 
all the people like these small businesses will be exactly the same. They won't be able to load, unload on Burton Road. It's just, it's just going to freeze it. Look at Sandwich Shop for a start. Krusty Cobb. This, like every morning these wagons right around there. They're all right, they've got cones. They get the food there. It, they rely on it. I mean, my lads rely on it. We've, we employ people who rely on it. But it's just everything. It, it's just stupid, absolutely. A useless, useless gesture to put about 50 yards of cycle track and walkway in. The clean air zone is quite hypocritical. It more, looks more like a cash cow and an attack on the working class. You know, if you're clean air zone, kind of within the uh, within the ring road, is key for Man and Malaz business because we have boats get delivered on massive you know, HDVs, increases our costs, and you know with, the, with business rates and the, the cost of bills, it's it's does does Sheffield Council want business to survive? I think not. And yeah, you know, they talk they talk about how they they do all this to kind of make you know, make um, a cleaner air and they make, make you know reduce the emissions and. Because Sheffield's clean air, uh, Sheffield's air is apparently, you know, horrifically um, you know, dangerous. It causes so many deaths. But there's more deaths caused by obesity. Um, but you know, you don't see kind of ta ex you know taxes on McDonald's, KFC. But they just rather tax you know the working people, tradesmen, uh, small businesses that rely on deliveries. And Cullum Island itself uh, is kind of it was it was a growing growing kind of micro economy. And now you just see less and less people coming down here. I've got a lot of friends in the area that have got businesses or working independent businesses, and they see that that you know. The sales have dropped anyway because of the, you know, the cost of living crisis, but the clean air zone is only going to make things worse. And I, I genuinely don't understand what world these, these councils live on. Um, you know, I'd love to stand as an independent one day, maybe change that. But I think the council needs to actually look and speak, li listen, li you know, listen to what we have to say. We're, we're the people that pay our taxes. We're the people that pay their, pay their salaries. They're, they're civil servants at the end of the day. But all they seem to do is serve themselves. And you look at the likes of Jared O'Mara, a Labour MP that embezzled money, it makes me wonder mm, what are the other Labour councillors doing? It's concerning. I've just had a delivery in from, from Portugal of a boat, which we sell, we sell boats, that's what we do for a living, and he will have to pay £50 it's all the way from Portugal to England to drop the boat off and it's got £50. If I have to get a boat higher high lifted onto, onto the truck to, to come out of my place, I've got to pay the, the uh, 50 pound to the haulier, yeah, so he can pay the council. Nothing to do with CAS, what's, uh, with CAS whatsoever, it's just a tax. A group of people behind you representing local businesses, just from this angle, it actually looks like they're in prison right now, behind bars. Obviously we can't get everybody in front of the sign because you won't be able to see what the sign says. How does everybody feel about this in this area? Ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. We're, we're all going to suffer, there's no doubt about it. You know, this road alone is just going to all be double yellows. I had a meeting with Councillor Douglas uh, three months ago regarding uh, the road structure and basically we had to put our suggestions into the council of what we suggested for the road structure. We, and obviously we suggested if we're going to do anything we need at least parking bays on there. Uh, ideally we, we prefer nothing, double, no double yellows, no parking bays and leave it as it were. I've been here since 95 and we've had no trouble whatsoever. Businesses have come and gone all the time. But all the council's trying to do is ruin the businesses in this area. That's all they're doing. And this new road structure, it seems that this new road structure, they're wanting to get everybody on the one-way systems back onto the dual carriageway into the clean air zone. And that's what everybody feels is going to be happening. Any personal message to the council? Get it right. Stop it, stop annoying small businesses. Categorically, the plans of the Red Route Initiative that are being outlined uh, by the committee are just outrageous and um, they give no due consideration to any uh, of our needs and also our patient base. Uh, and I cannot really see any way forward. And I hope that the committee will uh, duly interact with us as a practice and hopefully come to some kind of uh, solution. Amicably. Thank you for your questions. Please take a seat and I'll respond. I don't know if Councillor Masters wants to say something uh, before I respond, because she's been championing with your other councillors regarding uh, uh, Epsol Rod. So if Councillor Masters wants to say something. Well, we have been doing a lot of work with the businesses, but some were actually closed because of COVID restrictions when we were going ground. 
And I know there's a lot of misinformation out there. I know there's a, a lot of concern out there, which I have expressed in public on many an occasion, but I'm not so sure that it's an appropriate forum to actually raise that now. But I'm quite happy to talk to you afterwards, sir, because I know where you are. Because you wouldn't let me in when I try to get in. <laughs> OK. No, I do. I actually do understand that because it's not just you. It's churches and all other businesses on there which have very similar concerns to yours. Happy to talk to you afterwards. Thank you. What have you found out about the air quality in Sheffield in this area? So, just before the lockdown, when I first got interested in all of this, um, yes, the, uh, the the standards that we were supposed to have were exceeded at the bottom of the parkway where everyone comes into Sheffield. Uh, they were exceeded generally around the train station, they were exceeded generally around the Rundle Gate, uh, and depending, you know, occasionally it was bad on Peniston Road. Obviously we went into lockdown, and I thought that this was brilliant, because we went into lockdown and the only vehicles that were moving around through lockdown were your vans and your lorries doing your deliveries, actually dealing with the infrastructure, and throughout lockdown, there was no pollution. You never saw any of the standards being exceeded. But it's the vans and the lorries, and to some extent, though they were a reduced service, the buses were still running. And yet the vans, the lorries and the buses are the ones that are being targeted by your clean air zone. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a fallacy. Most of the problem is caused because everybody stops and starts and stops and starts and stops and starts around your traffic lights. Since, the, uh, since lockdown has been lifted, there's still a goodly percentage of people working from home. And if they're still working from home, they're not driving into offices. And what you've noticed is, apart from around Arundel Gate, where the buses stop, and around the train station, I've not seen anything exceeding the, um, the standards until just before Christmas, Peniston Road came to a bit of a standstill because everyone was stuck trying to get in and out of the supermarkets just before Christmas and there was standing traffic and that's the only time that Peniston Road, which is outside your clean air zone, ever went back up above uh, the, 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 the standards of, for air quality. So your clean air zone is a complete lie. It's a total and utter lie. Uh, as Councillor Masters has uh, highlighted, we were in the middle of a, a, a pandemic and we went out for consultation. Uh, you're right, uh, we can do things better, like you said, putting stuff on lampposts and uh, trying to get to uh, each business and risen uh, as we can. The, We've had a, a number of petitions over the last 18 months uh, regarding uh, the, the bus route uh, proposal for Ecclesall Road. We've had uh, a, a meeting with the ward councillors as well who've raised concerns regarding the impact on residents and, and businesses. Uh, the challenge for us is, as, as I've said, and you'll have heard uh, the other petitions, Ecclesall Road, Abbeydale Road, you know, very congested, our roads are congested, they weren't built to, to take so many uh, vehicles. Uh, the bus operators are saying, we need, you know, if you want to get people uh, not using the car, or uh, get them to jump on a bus. There was a meeting, I attended that meeting, and the main, com the main complaints that you had were people parking in Kellam Island and walking into work, which meant that residents couldn't park in Kellam Island um, and that people were using Kellam Island as a rat run uh, which obviously was affecting the air quality in, in Kellam Island um, around what's now a very residential area. Um, at that point in time they were still digging up the ring road around Kellam Island so that's why people were using it as a rat run. You fix the ring road, you don't need a rat run so that was brilliant. They complained about the amount of traffic going over the Ball Street Bridge, which was approximately one car a minute throughout the course of a day, because people want to get into and out of Kellam Island from somewhere other than the Ring Road. Um, so 
their plans seem to be that they would affect everybody by reducing the overall amount of spaces that you can park a vehicle around this whole area by something like 100. I think it was 100, 100 120 uh, vehicles wouldn't be able to park. They're reducing the amount of businesses that can have people parking for their staff. Never mind people parking in Kellam Island and walking into town. You don't get that round here particularly. There's very few people park up here and then walk into town. And that's all they do. And that, that yeah, and that's yeah. that's all they do. But then they walk. They do. And, and they all park here and walk to town. But there's not even that many people do that. There's a lot of people because there's a lot of businesses in this area where people park and come into work. That's the problem. We we are an industrial area, 99%. Absolutely, is 99% residential. It's a completely different area. If you look at that, the only thing I can see that this plan will do, because there isn't the issue with the pollution so much, there isn't the issue with the, the cars parking around here. There's not really an issue with cars parking. You can always find somewhere to park within a couple of hundred metres of where you're trying to go. So what's the problem? Why have you got to destroy the area? The only thing that I can possibly see that will benefit this area now and it won't be for the benefit of any of the industries, any of the businesses that work around here. All it looks like they're trying to do is they're trying to force the businesses to have to close, to have to move to somewhere else, so that these areas, these buildings, these sites become vacant and then you can buy them up for a song and you can then build blocks of flats on them so that Neepsend can now become a new and beautiful place to live rather than a place where people actually work. How much and council tax will they get out of them flats? Yeah. They will probably <laughs> get more council, out, council tax out of flats and properties than they will out of the businesses that own these that, that, that run in this area. The council have been very underhandedly handling the situation. They've not come to us directly, they've not discussed it directly. They've been very disorganised. We went to a planning meeting at Kellam Island. I asked questions. Apparently my business is in a one way, uh, sorry, a bus gate completely. I rely somewhat on passing trade, 40%, 48%. Who's going to enter a bus gate to come to your business? They're not. Um, although then they said, although the plan show bus gate, it's apparently a one way bus gate. So traffic goes the other direction. But again, to get to my business, you're going to have to do a two mile journey, a one and a half mile journey to get back to my business if you miss it. It's just going to kill the area completely. Unfortunately, the, the challenge we have, the bus system, as I've said a number of times this afternoon, is completely broken. We have a regular meeting with the operators, uh, but uh, I think it's towards the end of this month, the government is could withdraw the grant that it gives to, to bus companies, which means further bus services can be cut. What the council need to do is re realistically scrap the whole idea because what they're doing, they're redirecting traffic on a nice main road onto the side streets, which doesn't make sense. If a bus breaks down on one of these side roads or a lorry or an HGV, the whole system is just going to get backlogged. Central government actually proposed uh, the clean air zones to councils and offered a service by central government for a fee to use their services to identify vehicles. Basically, it's a service offered by central government, which councils can take up if they wish. And it appears that Sheffield City Council and many others have taken that opportunity and also are now paying central government for some of their services to enforce this new clean air zone. What do you think about that? I can't really comment on that. I'm not surprised. Um, it does seem to be government led. Um, I'm not sure if the road changes in this area are government-led or council-led. It does seem to be what this gentleman to my left was saying. It is that they're wanting us to kick us out so they can build nice pretty flats. Um, if they want to do that, they need to pay us compensation to relocate. And it's as simple as that. There are a lot of vans on the road, small vans, that are older than 2016. Uh, actually got the same running gear as a car. Does anybody know anything about car mechanics? I've had to sell my little van because it was a 14 wedge. It was only a Euro 4 diesel. Yeah, it comes as a car. I'm sure a van is probably more economical because it's lighter generally because it's not carrying goods, my van. It's got a pair of ladders in the back. So, yeah, I don't see why the common sense doesn't prevail again, so does, does it? does this look like an attack on small businesses to you? Yeah. 
predominantly in this area, I'd say 90% of these businesses in this area are small businesses. It's my understanding as well, there's a lot of small businesses with vans on HP, high purchase, so they can't sell the vehicles yet. And they may even have another two or three years to go and it might be older than 2016. So they're caught in a trap there as well, aren't they? Yeah, again, this clean air zone is funny because if you're following SatNav, you're going to go through the clean air zone, it's going to take you through it. But if I got kept my old van, which I didn't, I got a Euro 6 van instead because I didn't want to pay £10 a day. But you can drive around it and still get to the areas you need to. And that's what they're not realising. How well do you know this area? Pretty well. So coming from Hillsborough Football Ground on Penniston Road, yep. there's a sign saying now, a new sign that's just been erected, quarter of a mile ahead, clean air zone. If you take the left-hand lane and you see that clean air zone ahead of you, if you can't get back into the right-hand lane to go around the roundabout and go back again, you can't avoid it. So if you're in that left-hand lane at the roundabout, you see the sign in front of you, you can turn left into Kellam Island, but once you go in there, are you aware of this, that there are actually plant pots blocking off roads so you have to come out onto the clean air zone? You're forced in, yeah. What's your thoughts about that with the council? Obviously, being a local driver, you'd use your common sense and avoid it and not even go that way. As I've said, if you're unlocal or you forget or something like that, yes, you're going to have to pay £10. Do you think that's a bit of a trap, that, like an entrapment? Yeah. If you turn left before that sign, eventually you get sucked out because of the plant pots. Do you think them plant pots should be removed? Yeah, yes, because it's... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it lets you get out, the, out of the clean air zone it's back over... Back it. It's a way of getting out of the clean air zone back over the bridge. You know, this, this, this is the problem, this is what we were saying, is the road structure, what they're doing, it feels as if they want, they're wanting everybody to go round back onto the clean air zone. I mean, why, why put a clean air zone on a dual carriage, uh, on a uh, ring road? It should have been kept clear. So ev ev all, the, all the lorries or whatever can all get past, get through on the ring road without having to pay these charges. But like I said, more than anything, today we're, we're mainly, predominantly here, just talking about all the, the road structure and me, myself, from the business behind me, it's, it's the road I'm on which we're absolutely is ludicrous having double yellows on, all the way down the road, no parking whatsoever. And I know somebody raised about people parking and walking to town. This road alone, there's nobody parks here and walks to town. I can tell you, these cars on this road, every one of these work in these businesses. Where on earth are they going to park when they put double yellows on these roads? It's absolutely crazy. And the road behind me, where they wanted to divert everybody on, you've got Arctics going all the way around. There's no way Arctics is going to turn that corner. I'll take you for a drive around just to show you that it's, it's not feasible to put the plans for the roads in that they're doing. Um, HGVs will not be able to do it. It will pollute the air even more because cars have got to go further to reach places. Like my business, lots of old customers won't be able to find us anymore, so potentially closing us down. Before you go on that uh, tour with me and show me the roads, what's your personal message to the council? Stop doing it. Just stop doing it. Just let us run as businesses as they are and they already exist and they exist well. So coming down Neeps End Lane, instead of driving on Penniston Road towards Clean Air Zone, just over here is going to be a bus gate, so you'll have to turn left up here. Could be an HGV or anything trying to get to one at local companies. This will be developed into houses one day. So Saturday, so there are the odd pedestrians about, but most of them are going to a football match at Hillsborough probably. During the week, there's no pedestrians around here whatsoever, just people gonna work. Now we've got to cross this road in an HGV. We won't be able to go down here because it's a one way, so you've got to go left round here. These are businesses, so there'll be vehicles parked on here during the day. HGV, can't get up to Perth, there's a bridge up there, very low bridge, nothing can come under there. Down here, this is a bus gate on us right here, so we can't turn right here. This is the route I will have to now take to work instead of a lot shorter route so we're polluting air a lot more this is already a one-way street that works has been forever works 
Now pulling onto Norbury Street, which is a one-way street again, which does work. It's not a rat run, it's not a busy road. There's not tons of cars ever come down it. It just works. This is now a one-way going up here as it is. You'd normally be able to carry on straight up here to my garage. You can't, you're in an HGV, you've got to go left down this little tiny road. My garage is just up there on right. Round here in HGV. Instead of coming straight up that little bit of road there, because that's going to be a one way, so you won't be able to turn right here. And here we are at my garage. Now this road is going to get closed off on here just past my top gate which is here on the right I'm going to close this road round corner so any HGV coming up here to do a delivery towards or even the bin lorry will have to reverse all the way back down they will not be able to turn round and go back down so how can that be any good for pedestrians this road's closed here we won't be on this anymore this is the original road which is a one way works fine this is now going to be a bus gate you can't drive on it hgv's come here to the crusty cob quite often best sandwich shop in area they'll not be able to come anymore because they won't be able to get here so there's a good chance they could close down like all these other businesses here so when the businesses if they do close down what will happen to the land do you think uh, it'll come run down and turn into a a shithole like it used to be. With prostitutes hanging about and stuff for a while until it gets developed into flats, multi story flats, which, yeah, may happen one day, but I won't say it's going to happen for another 20 or 30 years at least. We're all still trying to raise as families and we've got businesses here. What do you think the council should do now that you've highlighted these problems? I think we should get them down here and take them for a drive round. Maybe try and do it in an HGV and see how ridiculous it is making big vehicles try and drive down little tiny back streets for a lot further distance than they have to usually to reach any of these businesses around here um, because they won't be able to reach here and they won't be able to reach here unless they go through clean air zone and some businesses like mine which we've just driven past they will not be able to reach there and if they could reach there they'd have to reverse back and risk pedestrians and cyclists. My personal message to the council is listen to us. You know, at the end of the day, you're civil servants, we pay your, your, your wages. So why, why is it that you think you can get away with it? Because it's only so long before some people in the city will rise up and you know, take their own action. You know, it's, it's a case where the government should fear its people, the, the people shouldn't fear its government. And the council will, will face the comeuppance. You know, your, your seat's only safe for so long because eventually the people will use their vote and the Labour council will be no more. And then, Let's see what happens next. I'm happy to come out with councillors, masters, uh, to come and visit your business and others if need be. But the important uh, issue for us is trying to manage the expectation of businesses, get the city moving. But I'm uh, confident we should be able to find uh, a solution that hopefully works for everybody. The thing with the clean air zone is, is you can pay to pollute. What's that all about? You know, you either can't go through it, it's a clean air zone, but you can pay to go through it, so you can pollute it, but you've got to pay for it. You know, but the thing is, a van can't go through, but a 10, 10 or 15 year old Land Rover, what's still pumping out bigger emissions than what a van can pump out, can still go through. So what I'm saying is, get ready, because 18 months time, I'll tell you now, public cars is going to be getting done as well. It's a matter of time before it happens. They're trialling businesses to start with and then it will turn to the general public like London has, like Oxford have. They're all doing it and that's what's going to happen. You mentioned London. Sadiq Khan's trying to extend, expand his ultra low emission zone. And it's been reported now that people are cutting the wires on the cameras and spraying the lenses. Obviously that's criminal damage. Yeah. It's not condoned. Do you think people might start doing that in the future if it carries on with the Sheffield Council? I'd hope they don't because the people's going to get into serious trouble doing that. You know, I, I should hope we, people power, I'm hoping, is going to prevail everything and we can get this road structure maybe 
uh, you know, scrapped or whatever. Like Ecclesall Road, I believe I've been told recently they've scrapped that through people power or, or they've delayed it even further, you know, in time. So I don't know, like I said, I'm not too up on that, but I've been told. So all we've got to do is get together and hopefully we'll try and slow things down. Have some of your customers been making uh, tours round the clean air zone to avoid it? Uh, yeah, it, I've certainly found a drop in business because we also have Arctics come and everything. And I've had phone calls ringing me saying, you know, we, we don't want to be coming down because so and so. So I've literally been sending my van to customers to pick up. You know, obviously the, the big stuff I can't do anything about because we don't have a flat back wagon. We've, we've only got a box of van. But where I can with my customers, because, because we're, we're okay and we're exempt from it, we go and collect ourselves, which is now taking my guy out of production back on the road. London at the moment, Sadiq Khan, he's expanding his ultra low emission zone, but people have actually been attacking his cameras. Yeah, so I've, um, <laughs> I've, I've seen kind of people make comments about this, and although it's unlawful and illegal, it's people taking a stand. You know, I, I, work, I work in London quite a bit, uh, I have a bit of business down there, and you know, I'm paying £12.50 a day, you know, I forgot to pay it, and because they don't give you any prior warning, um, you know, I, I thought I'd set up on the auto, auto pay system, but it failed. I've now got uh, £270 pound in fines that I need to pay. Uh, I've appealed it, but no doubt it'll get, get cancelled. Chef, this, this is more about government and council control. This area, they're sending everybody up Rutland Road, and Rutland Road is busy at any time. You know, so are they not going to pollute Rutland Road? You know, are they... If, and another thing is, and another thing is, does air not move? Does air just stay in the town centre? Does it not move? You know, so it's just ludicrous. The road structure's ludicrous, and the clean air zone is ludicrous. Have you got a message for Sheffield City Council? Do you really want me to answer that? <laughs> you need to wake up and smell the coffee, I'm afraid, and listen to listen to small businesses, because regarding Neeps End and Kellam Island. We've been here for a lot of years, and this was a rundown area till small businesses moved in and, rege and rejuvenated it up. Now they want to get shut of us and bring in all these exactly. flats and whatever, exactly. you know. And also through the lockdown, small businesses kept everybody going. You know, we, you know, we did. I, I never closed once. I kept open. We kept, oh, you know, paying us taxes and everything. So we're all paying. We pay the VAT. We pay everybody. If it wasn't for small businesses, all they're interested in is big companies. And it's small businesses what keeps the economy running. It's as simple as that. Public sector shouldn't be run like businesses. There should be no incentives, there should be no reward schemes. It should be, let's try and make this the best city possible for the people who live within it. Not, how can I increase my paycheck? How can I make lives harder for the working people? It gets to a point where you think, What's the point in being self-employed? And I think that's like what they want. They want everyone to just be on the payroll and you know be good law-abiding little citizens. To us here, it's not really just about clean air zone. It's about our customers trying to get to us. Loss of business. Which is I know it's caused by this, yeah. but it doesn't have to change around here because of this. We've got old customers that are 80 odd, 90 odd year old that won't be able to find us anymore. They won't be able to get to our business. And if they do, they've got to drive even further to get there, which is polluting the air even more. So it's madness. This just proves time and time again that Sheffield Council are in it for their own gain. And again, refer back to the likes of Gerald O'Mara. What are the other councillors doing and how are they benefiting from this? Yeah, someone say that he's the one who got caught up or whatever, but it doesn't mean to say that other people are acting unlawfully within the council. Uh, as, uh, you know, in past experiences, even politicians act unlawfully, don't they? Exactly. I mean, you just look at the, you know, the Tory government that's in, in power now, Matt Hancock, you know, it was released the, you know, the, oh, let's bring the new strain out. You know, it's like some sort of like new iPhone. You know, it's, the, the, the issue is I think the UK has a, has a severe corruption issue and I think that it won't be dealt with because the biggest frustration for me is that people in my generation don't care enough. They claim they care enough, but where, where are they now? They're not here. You know, I, I've, come, I've turned up late, but I'm working today. So I've, I've come down to kind of say what I have to say and try and, you know, put a message across to try and, you know, put some fire in the loins of, of my generation, the people. For all the road improvements, let's say, the, the, this scheme that they're trying to put in around Kellam Island and Neeps End, when they first put that, I put in the ob my objection through the, uh, the consultation document and I went through all of the comments. And it was quite interesting to see that 
there wasn't a single business that said anything positive about the um, about the, the proposals. There wasn't a single business, nor anybody that works within Neep's End, that complained about the, the that said anything positive about the proposals. The only people that said anything positive were people who occasionally walk through the area or occasionally drive through the area or I come down to one of the bars once a month. Nobody of any of the comments that I read, and there were a lot of them, that lived in this area or worked in this area said particularly much positive about it. So in London, the Eula zone is the Eula's and the congestion charge. The congestion charge I understand because it's central London. There's a lot of, you know, there's not much kind of airflow and there's a, there's a lot of people in a very small confined space. The expansion of the Eula's and the, and the clean air zone here, I mean, if we look at people like Andy Burnham in Manchester, he's, he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, true, he's a true Labour man. You know, he said, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting the, 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 the charges in and Manchester's now running. And the reason why Manchester's the, one of the fastest growing cities in the UK is because of the likes of Andy Burnham, who stands up and says, no, you know, you know what? Okay, we've got this initiative, but I'm not charging the people because it's hard enough to make a living as it is nowadays. Where's the, where's the Sheffield councillors? Nowhere to be seen. They hide, they hide behind the keyboards and behind the, the nice little paychecks and pensions, but they don't care. And that's, that's, that's the biggest frustration. We need people that, that care about this city. They care about business. They care about people, but very few of them exist. Andy Burnham did actually originally want people to pay this though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And Andy Burnham's a controversial figure. You know, you kind of, no, no one's perfect. And although I'm not a, not a supporter of, of Labour, I haven't been since kind of Blairism, kind of when I read back in, into history, uh, but it shows the, the strength of the, of the Mancunian people. Mancunians never, never lay down and take it. You know, they, they, st they stand up for what they believe in and say, no, this, is, this isn't enough. But I'm glad that he listened. The, the, key, the key point is that he listened to his constituents and said, right, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll hold off on it. Whereas Sheffield Council, we, can't, we don't know how to get hold of him. You, well, you send a letter and, there is, and the, the, the secretary gets back to you. They don't care. And it's, it's so frustrating to hear. And the clean air zone in Manchester is now put on hold, isn't it? It is. Which is why I do a lot more business in Manchester because it's, pe people are more invested in business and in, in, in supporting small businesses. Round here, the council just wants to see, see us fail. Each business apparently can have two parking permits. Well, thank you. You've got to pay for them. It doesn't guarantee you a space, but each business can only have two parking spaces. Well, what use is that? I mean, absolutely no use at all. It's almost like the council have gone, well, we've got to go through this process, but we are going to ignore everybody who it will actually affect. I mean, the idea of a pedestrian and a cycle route that will take you all the way out of Neep's End into nowhere. There's nothing there. Where are these pedestrians going to be going to that it's worth closing a bloody road for? They're not coming from anywhere. They're not going to anywhere because you know what? There's nothing there. What's been happening in Birmingham, the, the clean air zone charges, thousands of people are having them written off by the Birmingham Council because they can't keep up with people not paying. Do you think that's a tactic moving forward? If everybody didn't pay, they would have to scrap it? Yeah. I think they would, I, I think, yeah, they would. Yeah. But it's wrong. It's wrong that you should actually have to do that. Your council, and this is one that really kind of like makes me wonder, your council is elected by you to serve you. Not to dictate to you. We've not gone, I'm going to elect this dictator, thank you very much. They are there to serve their people. They are there to serve their constituents. This doesn't feel remotely like anyone is serving us. This is an idea that because the government are paying this money and they don't want to give that money back, which is one comment that I've heard from a member of the, uh, of the not the council, but from the, uh, the, the local government, that's not serving us. You look at this area, this used to be a very crime ridden area. It's still not great but it'll just it'll fall apart again because the businesses will shut down, the buildings go derelict, landlords just leave them to rot, and it's only a matter of time until, you know, Sheffield just falls apart even more. The zone in me had a, have an email from Councillor Douglas, but ours is basically about this road, uh, you know, about the double yellows and the parking. Mm -hmm. So I, I have had emails, and I've, I've got them, which I was going to print out and, uh, you know, give to relevant people, whoever need them, but uh, I've, I've had them. 
from Councillor Douglas just saying that we, we all had to put a proposal into the council for what we thought, as I said earlier. That, that's the only thing we've had. Uh, but I've had a 300 company petition put into them and they've even ignored that. Nothing's been done. Please, you know, try and have some care and, and, and passion for your city. You know, I, I'm born and raised here, as I'm sure many people are that will watch this. Before it's too late, use your vote wisely. The Labour councillors, aren't, they, aren't, they aren't for the people. They haven't been for, for, for decades. They, they only care for their own personal gain. Look at Jared O'Mara. Do your own research into this. I'm not going to sit here and kind of, you know, stand in the orange box and tell you what you need to do. But what's important is try and have some pride in your city because everyone's quick to go, oh, it's, you know, Sheffield's falling apart. Well, what are you doing to, what are you doing to stop it? Yeah, you know, I'm in the middle of my working day. I've come down to say my piece, but then I carry on working. Try and have some pride in your area. Have some community spirit. You know, the, the snow falling has been a, proven more so than anything. People in the city don't care. They don't care about the community. They don't care about each other. They're very selfish. So what I would say is, please use your vote wisely. Don't vote the Labour councils in the next election because they aren't for you and they're just in it for themselves.